First of all, a disclaimer, this is an unexpected free gift I received from Lenovo for putting out the review for the ThinkPad X1 Detachable, which I published a few weeks ago. The company did not tell me to review this, but since I have this, I might as well make a review. So let me show you what's included in the box first. Official retail price of this is 149 US dollars and here in Singapore it's 265 Singapore dollars. So it comes with this very nice hard case, ThinkPad logo. Usually when I think of ThinkPads, I think of their laptops. We have a strap here and the zip quality is really nice. You can't really see the teeth for the zips because they are covered by the cloth outside. So this seems like it's water resistant. This texture is some foam-like texture, it's really nice, but it can attract dust quite easily. So these are the headphones and they have this card here that tells you what all the buttons do. And this is the manual and warranty info. This is braided USB type A to USB type C cable. This case provides good protection for the headphones. So the design of this headphone actually looks quite good. The build quality is quite solid. There is a good amount of padding here. I'm not sure what the surface material is, but it's not real leather. And on the exterior, it's using the same material. And this material is also used here for the foam. And you can see there is a good amount of cushion. The weight is 214 grams, which is a good weight. It doesn't feel heavy when I'm wearing it. It has a good amount of flex and you can extend this to fit your head. And overall, it's quite comfortable to wear. It doesn't apply too much pressure on your ears. This is the front and on the back is where all the buttons are. Lenovo is using physical buttons for all the controls. So this button here is for taking calls or to play or pause music. This is the power button. To pair the headphone, just push it to the left side to the Bluetooth icon and the light will blink and pairing will begin. Pairing process is quite fast and to turn off, just push it to the right side and it will turn off. This is the USB-C charging port. It takes three hours for full charge and you get around 14 hours of battery life. And here on the other earphone, we have the microphone mute button or switch here. Volume controls, plus and minus, and this button in the middle is for the active noise cancelling. There are three modes, no noise cancelling, and mode 1 and mode 2. There is fabric here to cover the speakers, and if you look around the headphone, you can see tiny little holes for the mics. All of this is made with plastic, except for this part here, which looks and feels like metal. When you're wearing this, all the buttons will be at the back and you can reach them very easily with your two thumbs. There are headphones with touch sensitive controls. Um, I mean, whether you like physical buttons or touch sensitive controls is really a personal preference. The thing with physical buttons is there is no way you can accidentally press the wrong button. There is no app for the headphones, so if you need to adjust the audio quality, you have to do so through the music app that you are using. I cannot remember all the specifications for this headphone, so I'm just going to list the important specs on the left side here for you guys to see. These are on ear headphones, so they don't actually cover your whole ear like those really huge headphones do. And the amount of pressure that these ear cups apply on the ears, um, it's not that tight, it's also not that loose, so I can actually uh, shake my head like this and I won't have to worry about this coming off that easily. The weight is nice, I don't feel the headphones weighing down on me. This is actually lighter compared to the Sony WH-1000XM3s that I used to have. I used to have two, one for me and one for my wife. Um, this is 214 grams with those um, 
Sony headphones, I can feel the weight coming down on my head, but these are considered relatively lightweight. So this is way more comfortable to wear for long periods of time. Audio quality is good. There is good clarity, good bass and good volume. On a scale of one to five, I would rate this maybe around four to 4.5. The Sony headphones would be around 4.5 to 5 and all those are really high-end audiophile headphones, those are definitely 5. So this is definitely not as good compared to the Sony and those high-end headphones, but for the price, US $149, I think they are really worth the money for the audio quality you get. The active noise cancelling is again not as good compared to the Sony headphones. Actually the noise cancelling here is very similar to those wireless earbuds. When you use those really high-end headphones uh, with active noise cancelling, you can really hear or feel the noise being sucked out. Level 1 noise cancelling will provide some noise cancelling and level 2 will provide more noise cancelling. On a scale of 1 to 5, I would rate the active noise cancelling maybe 3 or 3.5 out of 5. They are just too subtle for me. Having said that, the sound isolation provided by the cushion or the ear pads, um, sound isolation is actually pretty good. So the combination of the sound isolation with the active noise cancelling, they do do a pretty good job at blocking out noise. So my overall experience when it comes to listening to music with these headphones is still very positive. I sold off my Sony WH-1000XM3s eventually because here in Singapore, the weather is hot and humid and when you wear over ear headphones like this, this will get warm and I get sweaty after half an hour. So eventually I sold off my earphones and switched over to using wireless earbuds instead. The audio quality for wireless earbuds nowadays, again not specific to Sony brand, um, the quality is actually quite good and some of them have really fantastic noise cancelling. The comfort level will depend a lot on the weather and also the environment you are in. So if you wear this in an air-conditioned environment or if you are just wearing this while you are commuting on public transport, then it should be fine. But if you wear this outdoors, if you wear this under the weather, um, this will get hot and this is not an issue that is specific to Lenovo brand. Uh, it's an issue that is specific to or over the year or on year headphones. Audio quality for a course is all right. I don't really have high expectations for built-in mics on earphones or headphones. Um, I would say the core quality is acceptable. Right, to conclude, I like the design, I like the audio quality, however the active noise cancelling quality could be better. So that's the compromise with the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 ANC headphones. As the saying goes, you get what you pay for. There are definitely headphones with better audio quality and active noise cancelling, however those headphones are also more expensive. If you have an extra budget of maybe 50 to 80 US dollars, you can consider getting the Sony WH-1000XM3s. Um, or if you have like two times more budget, you can go with the Sony WH-1000XM4s, which are at the time of this review selling at 350 US dollars. That is more than two times the price of this. Um, the audio quality for Sony is very good. The active noise cancelling is very good, but I'm not sure if the audio quality and the ANC is like two times better compared to what you get here. So in terms of value for money, um, uh, Lenovo do offer good value for money simply because it is way more affordable. All right, so that's my review. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys have any questions. See you in the next video. Bye.